So, one day I was sitting in my surgery waiting for my next patient to arrive and I was having a look around and an idea hit me. I thought to myself, how cool would it be if we could have one of those futuristic motion sense bins that you walk up to, it detects that you're there, opens up, lets you throw whatever in and then off you go. As opposed to those old fashioned traditional bins that, well, they just kind of sit there and they're kind of boring. And then I had an idea. Using some really simple components like an Arduino Nano, an ultrasound sensor, a motor and my trusty 3D printer, I thought I'd have a go at making one. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not going to be able to use this in my surgery. Medical equipment has to go through a lot of regulatory checks, you can't just use any old thing. But I thought it would be fun to try, so in this video I'm going to show you how I did just that. To start out, I logged onto ChatGPT and started typing away. I told it exactly what I wanted to make, the components I was planning to use, and I asked it to give me some wiring instructions and some sketch recommendations to upload on for the Arduino. It took a little bit of back and forth. Anyone who's used ChatGPT knows that it, sometimes you have to play about with the way you're wording things. But we got there in the end and it was able to give me wiring instructions and a sketch. And then the next step was to go ahead and put all this on a breadboard and see if it actually works. The breadboarding for this project was fairly straightforward. Whenever I'm prototyping projects, I tend to use my benchtop power supply. It's just a lot easier, it's a lot more efficient than using different batteries and you can play about with the voltages a lot more easily rather than swapping out for different batteries. So that's just a little tip. With regards to the actual circuit, it's fairly straightforward. The sketch programmed onto the Arduino basically tells the ultrasound sensor to constantly keep out on the lookout for anything within 5cm distance away. If it detects something within 5cm of its sensor, it causes the motor to spin. So the idea is that when we build our bin, once you approach it, the motor spins, the lid opens, and then you can put whatever you need to into the bin. At this point, it was just a very simple case to see whether the motor was actually spinning. And as you can see, after I put everything together, it was working. Once I was happy that the sketch was working as intended, the next step was to jump onto Fusion 360 and start modelling a really simple test box just to see if this works as a proof of concept. The box was as simple as it comes, there's a simple hinge mechanism, the bin and then a lid and then some housing for a housing spot for the motor. The motor sits, there's a little arm that attaches to the motor and then it literally pushes the lid open and closes it and again this is just a proof of concept before we commit further material and filament to the project. Once I was happy with the model the next step was to take everything over to Prusa Slicer, get that sliced up and then send it over to 3D printers to get started. As always, I printed my prototypes in white PLA. I know there's a little bit of controversy about how good a white PLA filament can be for your nozzle. For me, I just like it because it shows up all the little defects and then when I, I know when I move on to nicer colors, it's just gonna look the business. So that's how I do my prototyping. So, once everything had been assembled, I was able to get the box working as intended and it felt absolutely amazing. Now that I had a good working prototype and proof of concept working, the next step was to go back into Fusion 360 and almost start from scratch with a few differences. In this second iteration, I had to make space for the ultrasound sensor, make the model bigger, and then I changed the design so that I can basically have an inner and an outer box type thing going. So the way it works is you have the inner box which is the main bin and then there's a space underneath that to house all the electronics in a really nice discreet way. And then that way I'm able to take the box apart as needed but still hide all the electronics just to try and give it a more complete and polished look. So because I wasn't going to be using a breadboard in my final project, I had to go and get everything soldered up. 
I usually like using perf boards for my project just to try and keep all the components in one place but because this project had components in quite different locations as it were I decided just to go old school and just solder everything right directly onto the microcontroller so the main things that needed soldering were the 9 volt snap thing I'm not sure what it's called if anyone knows please let me know in the comments the ultrasound sensor the motor and that was basically it so here's a nice little montage of me soldering and this is how everything was looking towards the end so we had all of our 3d printed parts i printed this in both black as contrast the black was a matte black from hatchbox i believe and the yellow was yellow from tin mori And here you can see my circuit all soldered up. I'll be the first to admit I think this part could have been a little bit better. The soldering was the soldering was okay, but it just looked a bit all over the place. It served the purpose, but I'm a bit of, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and this bothered me, so next time around I'll be thinking of a better way to do this. Again, any suggestions more than welcome. So with everything all prepared, all that was left was to get everything together. So the way this project fits together, the motor goes into the motor housing and the wires come out of that little circle at the back end there. The wires are then hidden underneath the yellow inner box. The ultrasound sensor is fitted to the front of the box and then everything is fitted together. The key to holding all this together is actually the yellow pin that goes into the hinge that holds everything together. If in the future I ever decide I need to take this box apart, I can use that hinge, take out the pin and everything all sort of, sort of falls apart. So that's what's really holding it together. All in all, I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. Um, it works exactly as intended and it looks pretty good. I think the black and yellow is a vibe. I can get on with that. In terms of improvements, I think definitely the electronics could have been a bit tidier. So that's something I'll be looking at in future projects. And also, maybe just adding a few more industrial looking things. Something just to make it a little bit more edgy. But otherwise, all in all, really happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did please consider liking, subscribing and dropping a couple of comments below and also let me know if there's any other project ideas you guys have in mind, maybe we can give them a crack. But otherwise I'll see you next time, ciao.